I'd like to take you on a tour of my Google Classroom and show you how I am using and organizing my class for the 2021-22 school year. Let's check it out. Hi, my name is John Sawash. I help teachers and students use Google products in the classroom. Welcome to my Google Classroom. I want to take you on a tour and show you some of the things that I'm doing this year to organize my assignments and connect with my students. The first thing I'd like to show you is that this year I am creating four classes, one for each marking period. Uh, now these first, you know, these three over here, those are just staged for later on. Right now I'm teaching this class, quarter one, and there's a couple of reasons that I am doing this. One of the big issues with Google Classroom you may have experienced is that you cannot prevent a student from turning in old assignments. For whatever reason, they'll try to submit assignments that are weeks or months old. By splitting my class into four separate sections, one for each marking period, it prevents students from turning things in across marking periods. Once I finish quarter one, submitted all my grades, report cards have been printed, I will archive the quarter one class. That shuts everything down and then invite my students to join the quarter two class and I'll continue that along the way. It also helps Google Classroom from becoming overcrowded with information. If you use a whole one class for the whole year, it's just so much stuff that it becomes very cumbersome and starts to load very slowly. A little bonus tip, um, you may be familiar with something called originality reports. This is a plagiarism checker that's built into Google Classroom, but the free version of Google Workspace only allows you to use the originality reports five times per class. By creating four classes for the year, I can now use it up to 20 times. So if you're an English teacher or you do a lot of writing assignments, that's a nice bonus feature. All right, that's a little look at the outside of the class. Let's go ahead and open up the class and uh, check out what we've got going on inside. I'm gonna head over to the classwork page. The next thing I wanna talk with you about are my topics. Now you can create topics um, to organize your assignments and everybody's got a different opinion about it. Last year, I began organizing my assignments by week. So I have week one, week two, week three, and that worked really well during the pandemic, during remote uh, teaching. And I've decided to continue that trend this year. So I am also going to be uh, organizing my assignments by week. Now I've gotten a lot of feedback on this. A lot of teachers like this uh, strategy. I would love to know how are you organizing the topics in your Google Classroom. Drop me a comment and let me know what strategy works well for you. Another thing that I'm going to be doing this year is uh, creating a lot of video instruction. So this is my week overview. I'll post this as a material assignment and just says what we're going to be doing for the week. And I've recorded a very short video. It's like 60 seconds long, there's no editing involved, just here's what you can expect this week. I'm doing this for a couple of reasons. This year, I do anticipate more student absences than normal due to the continuing pandemic, and I wanna be able to allow the students who are at home, perhaps in quarantine, to continue learning and following along with the in-class instruction. By recording videos, they can watch from home, and the students who are in class with me, they'll get the benefit of the verbal instructions, but they can always rewatch it if they weren't paying attention the first time. Super easy to do. I use Screencastify uh, to record my videos. Um, if you have a phone with the Google Classroom app on it, you can also just uh, open up the app and record right from your camera on your phone. I'm gonna continue doing this. I kind of call it like the mini flip, the flipped classroom, but much, much easier than trying to record an entire lesson. Another thing that I um, am going to be doing this year is um, the Google Slides Trapper Keeper. And I've shared a couple of videos on this idea, my use of Google Slides. Um, but the idea is some assignments are just very small, uh, very quick, and they don't deserve, they don't need to be their own assignment in Google Classroom. It's just a quick five minute practice activity. And so what I have done is created a Trapper Keeper using Google Slides that contains all of these different activities. And they're all random. There's not really any connection between them. It's just a place where I shove all these random assignments, just like you did when you had a Trapper Keeper in the 80s and 90s when you were in school. Now, I have a whole video on this idea. There's a great add-on called Slip and Slide that I'll link to in the description. 
and you can use this add-on to add new activities to this existing presentation. And we'll just continue expanding this over the course of um, the quarter. Again, this works very well with my first tip on creating a new class for each quarter. We're only going to have eight to ten weeks of assignments in here, and then I'll create a new one for second quarter, third quarter, and so on. Now, this activity will go from one week to the next. So I simply, you know, have it here in uh, Google Classroom. Uh, week three is done. I'll just drag that assignment down to week four and we'll continue using it. So it works really well. The last thing I'd like to show you is actually back on the stream. Now the stream is where you post announcements for your students. And frankly, I'm really bad at this. I always forget the stream is here. I forget to post an announcements, but this is a very useful way to communicate with your students. So this year, I am pre-scheduling my announcements. Now I've got a, a quick, you know, welcome to English 9 announcement in there with my syllabus attached. But if you look up here under saved announcements, you'll see that I have quite a few more. I know that in the first few weeks of school, uh, we're going to have a quiz every Friday. So I've already pre-written that announcement. I know we're going to be doing a research paper at the end of the month, so I've already put in an announcement on that. Spirit Week is at the end of September, so I've got an announcement for that. Um, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Halloween, like you can go as far forward as you want, write those announcements, schedule them, and they'll just post uh, when it's time. So once a month, I'll come in here, look at the calendar, write up whatever announcements uh, I need to communicate, and it uh, allows me to improve the community of my classroom um, in a really easy to manage way. There's another very important aspect of teaching with Google Classroom that I wanna highlight before uh, we sign off. And that is communicating to parents what Google Classroom is and how they can be involved in the learning process. I have an entire video on Google Classroom for parents. I'll link to that up here. And if you're interested in more advanced Google Classroom tips, check out this playlist down below.